Excellent. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Today, we are going to talk about Generation Z and about the Generation Theory in general and what we are to do, how should we get ourselves prepared for this generation and what interesting steps we need to take in this regard. My name is Mitri Tatin. I work at Yepam Minsk office. I've been working in IT industry for 12 years and I have come a very interesting way. I started as a tester. Later, I qualified as a developer, and then all of a sudden, I became DevOps engineer, DevOps specialist, whatever you call me. At the moment, I'm doing training. I train employees. I train young students who come to our labs, who come to study without yet having even a profession or not as an employee. And today, I'd like to talk about young people. I asked you what you know about Generation Z. Most of you understand what it is, but still there is a generation theory. The theory of generation split people, though it does sound strange that they split people. Well, so this theory categorizes population into groups with different quite specific features. In order to understand what is meant by generation that, let's get back to history and uh, see what the previous generations are. Let's not go that far ago and let's start with Z gener X generation. Generation X is applied to those people who are born somewhere in between 1965 until 1996. These figures may vary depending on the information sources and let's see what are the key characteristics or key triggers that define what Generation X is. Let's start with the attitude to work. What kind of work and jobs X generation needed? They were interested in stable work, having stable income, where almost nothing changes. That's the ideal thing. Let's talk about technology. These are the people who so BASM, don't mix with the BDSM. Does any of you know what is BASM? Oh, how many intelligent people we have today. Great. Let's talk about the question. What's the main question which Generation X had? What's the point? They were searching the sense in everything. They were thinking, what's the sense of work, of jobs, whatever. And. Uh, the way of communication which they had, those were electronic communication, like text messages and emails. The biggest fear of X generation is, what's going on with my generation? Everything was unclear. People didn't understand what was going on right there at that moment. Let's practice a bit. Let's get warm up. I'll need your help. I want you to do like this, swipe with your right hand. Please do, one, two, three, go. Wow, it works. Cool. Now it's Generation Y. What does Generation Y think about job? What job should be like? It should be a high position job, high level job, not necessarily stable, but the title job title should sound very busy and important. These are the people who saw how personal computers and internet developed and grew. These are the people who are asking questions, what's next? The means of communication is ICQ. Does any one of you use ICQ? Cool. Now, put your hands down. I mean, those who had more than six, whose ICQ number had more than six figures, who had seven, eight, etc. Put your hands down. If you had six or five symbols as an ICQ number, who had five symbols in an ICQ number, who bought it, who paid for it? Great. I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised that ICQ survived, at least in your heads, in people's heads. 
the main fear is how to pay for all the bank loans that you managed to get from banks. Let's start again. Wow, swipe. Excellent. Now we have come to Generation Z. This is what we're going to talk about. The generations are the people who would like to find a job to their liking. These are the people who saw the era of iPhone development, which completely changed the mobile development sphere forever. The main question interested for them is why technologies? Do they still exist? I don't know. Means of communication? Emoticons. I still could not understand why these emoji stickers are, are needed. I think people in this room do not understand as well. What do you think is the biggest fear of Generation Z? Okay, the battery is low. Well, however, they're quite interested in other issues. Generation Z. Why are we talking about this generation? We do it because these are the people who very soon will start apply and start working in your company. So you have to do something about these people. These American psychologists say that this generation is completely different from the previous ones and it's hard to understand how to deal with them, how to live with them, how to communicate with them. Let's try to do some kind of self-identification. It's not polite to ask about age. That's why I mentioned certain triggers or features of that generation. Who of you thinks that you are X generation? Who is a real X generation? None? Oh, one or two. Cool. Well, if to believe in generation theory, the biggest hopes are with the Generation X, there has always been a gap between parents and children. The best friend of a child was a grandfather or a grandmother, and this intergeneration relation is important because Generation Z will most likely become friends with Generation X. So that'll be a kind of a proxy in between us, and they try to install the peace between. Y and Z generation. Who of you thinks that you are Y generation? That's an expected answer because we are a majority. I think the story for you will be most interesting because against two previous backgrounds, the difference could be huge. And we'll talk about actions that are possibly needed. And who is Generation Z? Well, maybe I won't tell you anything interesting, or maybe I'll talk complete rubbish and you will joke, is what I'm saying. But if you first play fun and joke with me, and then you come to me and tell me, okay, we're different, we don't think the way that you think we do, I'll be grateful. If we'd like to study what generation that is, we'll consider four aspects. We'll talk about money, we'll talk about mobility, education and mindset. Let's start with money. Why money? Money is not just money, but money has become the measurement of success for Generation X. And for those people who work at the end of 80s and 90s, everything was very unstable. Things were complicated. People didn't know what would happen on the next day. A good job would be considered to be a job for a big, serious company, because this company will not most likely go bankrupt that fast. And that company would exist tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, and the salaries would be paid. Later, the situation improved and become less complicated, and company's name was no longer a reason to be proud of. People started to measure 
their positions. For instance, I'm a senior tester, you're a middle tester, so I'm better, I'm more successful. What happens next? IT industry is developing drastically. A number of companies emerge. There's no problem at all to become a company's director. You simply start up a company, give yourself a job title as a director. It's, it's that easy. And uh, in some companies, a middle tester may be paid $1,000, while a junior could be paid $2,000, and this is fine. That's why the position as it is, is no longer a measurement of success. There's only one way how to measure who is more successful, and this is money. This is by the, the reason why companies do not allow employees to talk about their salaries to avoid the situation when you know that somebody who is low in position than you is paid more. There are stereotypes that testers and IT specialists are always asking for more money. Let's have a look if it is really so. I collected some statistical data over eight years period of time. And the statistics is about different reference grades in three countries, Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. The diagram shows certain growth. You may tell me that this is not a figure that proves everything because inflation and life costs have to be considered as well. OK. But you know there's a big max index, which costs how much a big mark costs. I check the statistics as well, and I make recalculation based on the cost of a big mark. And I calculated how many big marks a tester could buy per month. So you see that over eight years, a tester could buy 160 more big marks. It means that the salary is also growing in terms of values and figures and in terms of high quality. Let's, for a joke, imagine the testers live in the office and eat bugs and live on bugs and invest everything in oil industry. But the growth here is even more interesting because you see that the number of bars of oil that could be purchased has grown two times if you invest in oil. So this brings evidence that the salary rate constantly grows. This situation reminds me of a dumping fight in the market when big companies try to reduce prices for the goods in order to destroy the smaller players on the market. But once all the smaller players are out of the market, the prices start to grow again. Here, the situation is very much similar because bigger companies start to increase salary of their employees in order to attract specialists from com company competitors who cannot compete in terms of salary. And uh, actually, I'm a little bit concerned with this trend because the diagram tends to decline. Maybe this has already happened and our salaries will start to go down. I do expect a salary decrease. Let's continue. Have you ever heard a story about young specialist? A, a novice comes to a company and knows nothing and he requests a salary rise after three months of work. Is that a familiar situation? I believe it is. Let's analyze why this happened. There is a Deming training model developed in the 60s, and it looks like this. We have the understanding and time. Understanding is not yet the real knowledge. This is only the way that the person thinks what he knows. We see that at the beginning there is a slight dip a person thinks that, okay, he started to understand something, then later he realizes that it's not the case, the, he still understands badly, and the real training only starts after this. However, 
this diagram does not reflect a realistic picture. In fact, this training graph looks a little bit differently. This confidence, I'd say confidence, naive confidence that the person knows absolutely everything, it appears after three months. He believes that if he enters the market after three months of work, he will be in high demand, he will be well paid. So he comes to his manager and says, OK, I'm cool enough and I can ask a salary increase. But the sooner the specialist realizes that he knows nothing about his sphere of activity, the better because he starts to learn. This model was developed in the end of the 90s and uh, it shows human behavior over a certain period of time, and it's not only about that generation, it's about all other generation. Let's also talk about startups in terms of money flow. I believe most of you were dreaming to start up a company somewhere at the beginning of their careers without doing that much and earning a lot of money. They say that Generation Z is very good and dealing with startups, and more and more successful startups appear. But the situation is simple and different. People have finally learned to distinguish between potentially successful ideas and uh, ideas that might fail. So the share of successful startups have has increased only because we learned how to make startups. We learned how to develop startups for business plans for startups. We learned to calculate the payback period. There is no new mindset for startups among generation that is just the experience. Well, but let's talk about mobility. Let's talk about communications. As as it has been said before, the biggest fear is to be left without a network. I observed the situation that new people are not used to living without internet. It's not because they don't know what to do when internet is not available. They just don't think that there could be a moment when the internet or network connection is over. They just don't think that this could happen. They don't know what to do about this. Another aspect is that, look, it's a horrible picture. It's when they see that the battery is low on the screen of their mobile phone because everything is there. You have the bank card in your mobile phone, you have a Navi, you have all your contact lists. You, and what, what, what should you do? How will you book a taxi? And how will you use the public transport? Because you have a public transport route map in your mobile phone. There is nothing left except to lie down and cry. But it's a joke. New generation is actively using all these apps. They adapt to everything new. They have apps for absolutely everything. Soon there'll be an app to clean up the snow in front of somebody's garage. They communicate via phones. They have a lot of applications. They have a lot of communication tools, like chatbots. By the way, there's interesting statistics. Gartner believes that by 2020, 70% of office workers will be using corporate chatbots on a daily basis. These chatbots are already available in the internet shop support portals. I still do not trust them. I don't use them, and I'm asking to put me through with the operator, it's not because they are bad, not because they're working badly, it's just because I want to talk to a person, to a human being. Maybe it will take me more time, but these are people. Well, generation that feels okay about talking to a robot. 
For example, I have a car navigator and I also feel stupid when I talk to my car and the Z generation doesn't feel that way. Let's take Siri, Alexa, voice assistants. Speaking about communication, we talk about uh, messengers. And what is the key difference from Y generation? The Y generation joined the network as soon as it got the possibility. I remember that uh, everybody hid their real names. We were trying to be anonymous, incognito. The uh, Z generation comes back from the network. Everybody calls himself or herself a real name, and Messenger is now a public place. I s still cannot force myself to write a message to someone at 3 p.m., at 3 a.m., sorry, uh, because I will alarm them. And these guys from uh, X generation simply turn on uh, the public assistant. What I'm trying to say is that there is a revitalized need for human-to-human uh, -human interaction. And if we, Y generation, members are ready to do business online, the Z generation prefers uh, human contact. I remember days uh, when first we do things online, uh, but a couple of days later, um, I'm asked to go to the boss's office to talk uh, person to person. Never spare time for person to person communication because this is the only way to find out th what those individuals are worried about, what uh, their concerns are. Okay? Now let's talk about education. Education is now much more affordable and accessible. We now have online training and free of charge training. Does it solve the problem? Can we really learn stuff online? Let's think about it. Let's say you need to learn a certain technology, any technology related to testing. Well, we go into Google and start looking for information. I think 100, 200, 1,000 entries, uh, several pages of hits uh, will be available. And I'm sure that you will receive awesome reviews about uh, training courses. And people will say, I. I'm now very popular after taking this training course. I'm in great demand. I can always get a land any job. When I see so many uh, raving reviews, I am alerted. I don't think you can learn much from e-learning courses. Secondly, there is another problem, the problem of choice. We don't know anything about quality that, that course delivers except the reviews and we don't know if this is sufficient to make an informed choice. IT industry is growing fast. I remember in 2010 I was hiring testers and my boss and uh, I were trying to compile a set of requirements, a kind of metrics of competences for testers. It took us three hours uh, to draw it up for a job title to get someone who we really need, the right person. So after three hours of uh, uh, heavy debate, only one entry was made to be adequate, adequate tester. Now, in 2019, any vacancy for any tester 
requires so many things because technology is far more advanced. It is really challenging and it's getting even harder because we have software engineering tests where the list of requirements gets longer and to learn it all online uh, is a pretty tall order. Therefore, as things stand in a race of growing education and competences, technical uh, complexity is increasing. And I still believe that face-to-face uh, -face, uh, or in-person learnings, trainings, um, is the only way to provide someone with good education. What has changed? We need to make more effort to motivate people to study something. We need to have clear answer to the question why they need it, because they'll not, they will not do it out of fun. They have other things to find in their mobile phones. So let's uh, talk about this. Let's talk about thinking. Apart from a lot of fun things you can, they can find in their smartphones, uh, there is another thing. They started uh, intimidating us with clip thinking a while ago. We were told that humanity is degrading. I think many of you heard that by 2010 the uh, capability to focus attention was 12 seconds and by 2015 you could stay focused only 8 seconds and people started drumming up uh, warnings that it has to do with the internet and stuff. I look at it differently. Let's imagine we have information, a lot of it, and this is our f uh, focused attention window. Let's say we need to find an answer to a certain question. Again, we go to Google, run a query, some of us have good hits, on first try, others on the third try, but then at the end of the day there is tons of information, tons of links, and uh, we need to review a dozen of them at least to, to know is it really something that we require. So we try to pass it across uh, looking at the uh, links, and we really need to focus on each of us, on each of them. No, this will not do. Let's take another one. So this mechanism works like machine learning. Let's say mm, we are in neural network, there is expanding amount of information, our capabilities are growing, and since we have more test data, more data for learning, our model starts performing better. Same story, no one's got less smart, we did not dumb up. But the amount of information um, ensured a quality change. What we used to do in 12 seconds, now the new generation can do it in 8 seconds. It's just they're capable of doing that in less time, in 8 seconds. What makes it, what um, is the upshot of that? It makes communication more complicated. Uh, we used to think that people will listen to us for at least 12 seconds. Now, they will only listen to us during 8 seconds. So we have to be very clear with our messages. So we looked into four aspects. I promised to cover testing a bit since this is uh, SQA days. I talked to a large number of students who undecided, yet they don't know which way to go, they only started. And I heard an interesting thing. 
from them. I think I'm going to start the holy war again about uh, manual versus automated, but most of the people I talk to, students, I mean greenhorns, wet behind the ears, very primitive knowledge. They said automation is boring. It's uh, routine. It, it has no prospects. I want to do manual thing, manual stuff. And you know, it's exciting to observe things. I attend conferences, I listen to what people say, and the number of talks about where manual testers uh, can expand is uh, 10 times as more as uh, automatic testing. There is another thing. Previously, everyone liked to go into manual sector because it was the easiest entry point. All you have to do is be adequate. Now, to be hired as a tester, uh, it's just as challenging as to be hired as a developer. So, as a result, recruits believe that uh, three years from now I will become a developer. If that doesn't work, I'm uh, going to quit and join another company. Now people know uh, for a fact what they are after. If they won't become developers, they will do everything to become software developers. If they want to do testing, uh, they will apply for testers job, which is great alleviation uh, for us employers. When we talk about testing as an industry, as a sector, I think it's just it's coming out of age. We knew a little about testing 10-15 years ago. It was all haphazard. It was all random. There was no system or consistency to it. There were no Russian, English, uh, Russian language speaking experts. We followed uh, Western trends blindly. But now the sector has matured uh, and it is treated with a uh, higher level of uh, seriousness. Not to say that it wasn't like that before, but now the level of earnest has increased. Besides, why testing has become more attractive? Because now there are new possibilities. Big data testing, mobile testing, machine learning. We still don't know everything. We don't know how to test things right. And every person who joins test teams could be a pioneer who will break the ground and blaze the trail and it's uh, really uh, full of opportunities. Now for the conclusions. I hope I managed to show you that the Z generation is just as any other generation the only thing that is different is that habits have changed. New habits have come up associated with new times, related to mobile phones, related to Siri and Alexa and uh, uh, good connectivity and uh, bandwidth. What can we do about it? If you still don't have Z generation knocking on your door, think in advance how you're going to teach them. And remember, you have to be very convincing. Uh, you have to motivate them to read something. If you have a, a stack of uh, knowledge transfer, be sure they're not going to read through all of that. Of course, uh, you need to understand and appreciate new habits. Uh, you need to remember how to communicate, when to communicate, to cover important areas and do it quickly. And 
be prepared for competition, competition for attention. You are competing with a smartphone that is sitting in uh, their pockets. Thank you. And the huge competition will be uh, for workplaces. I think we still have a bit of time left uh, for Q&A session. Thank you. I have a number of home-based projects and uh, I have school children working for me and I didn't realize that Uh, for a long time. I, th I want to tell you that the next generation is uh, very adequate and in terms of values uh, they are closer to X generation. In many startups uh, I realize that it's 12 uh, through 15 year old school children working for me and their visions, their attitudes and uh, to frames of reference are very close to ours. First I thought school children, but then I realized it's great working with them because they write smart, smart stuff. I mean 12 year olds working for a startup, but this is new time, new habits. It goes to show about motivation. Why is it uh, convenient to work with school children? I trained people in software development. It uh, had its challenges, but if a child is motivated for a reason to learn software development, then uh, they would work with total commitment, as long as it is interesting. If he is captivated, if he is passionate, he's going to write to you, he's going to bring new stuff, he's going to show what he did. Unfortunately, this passes. Perhaps a new generation will give us hope. And as they grow up, as they run into the need to work, they will carry forward this uh, positivity. Thank you f for sharing. We have uh, one, two questions. Thank you. Thank you for your report. I'm here on the steps. You mentioned to compile or prepare documentation uh, because new generation has different perceptions, but uh, more often than not, the documentation takes years to draw up. Uh, neglecting the nature of the generation to come. Don't you think that this Z generation is going to lose, lose out to Y generation that d digs in, that likes to read? And how can we mitigate the transition, especially in massive projects that uh, last for years? Thank you for your question. First, the Z generation will never lose. They will outlive us, to put it bluntly and cynically. What can be done about and should there anything should be uh, there anything that can be done? In fact, this is a good, this is a good question. And some project lasts for years and you see people not changing, getting older, but if you want to get fresh blood, if you want a wave of people who want to operate using advanced technologies in lead, then perhaps you need to think about it. It's not a question of whether it's needed for everybody. It's a question of uh, if you want uh, fresh blood, get ready for it. But if you're happy the way things are, you don't have to do anything. Let uh, 30, 35 year olds join your ranks. If you're happy with it, then what about the uh, Y generation? Is it 
still going to be looking for work? Potentially. Thank you for presentation, Sergei. So far, I, I'm uh, running into Y generation that uh, as a link between X and Z. So the Y generation is a link between the older generation of X and the younger generation of Z. That's my experience. We can consider this interaction from different perspectives. The Z generation is not grown up enough. We haven't started uh, working relations yet, practically. And things are going to change. As soon as these people come to work, then there will be more misunderstanding, more disconnect. Obviously, we know better what mobile telephones are. We can easily use various apps, but it will come down to clashes between systems of values. And the X generation uh, cherishes work-related values. I guess this is uh, where there is more closeness. We need to, you need to pick someone who asks the best question.